first I'd like to thank everybody, all the performers particularly, um, and over we had a few memorial concerts to John, and uh, it just uh, been tremendous the number of people who said they've been influenced by John and are going on singing the songs. That's the best sort of uh, praise you could give to anyone. John would be thrilled. Um, and um, some time ago, Lachlan reminded me, you know, John loved singing, and after his last surgery, he even uh, was singing, the doctor said, as he came out of his surgery. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't recognise the song, but it might have been just as well. <laughs> <laughs> and as most of you know, it's amazing, he really was a political commentator from the 1950s on. Uh, and there's an enigma about John Dengate. I mean, he was an amazing observer, but he was also an indulger in human foibles. So he showed both that compassion, uh, you know, in his comments, um, but also caustic criticism for the foibles, the way some people live their life and behave. And the other thing is being here in the Bush Music Club. That was such a huge part in John and my life. Um, the moment the Bush Music Club and the internet things doing a little sort of how many couples got to know each other at the Bush Music Club. Well, a lot of us didn't necessarily meet here, some did, but um, certainly a lot of our life was spent here. And uh, as I just look around, like Jamie's here in the front seat with his wife, Rhonda, and their children, uh, Barbara and George Gibbon, their children, the Mars and Frank um, and Kit. When, the, when Laughlin was a little bubby, um, <laughs> can you believe? And uh, we all got together, you know, it was that sort of thing. We'd all get together and have picnics and, uh, uh, and then we'd sort of plan, the, run the meetings uh, so that the concert party could go off and perform. And then we'd have those sing about nights where we spent ages to say, did we have enough money to put an ad in the Sydney Morning Herald and let anybody know it was on? Big problem with folkies. You have a wonderful concert, but don't tell anyone how to get there or where it is. Oh. Um, so, but, you know, we eventually would get a crowd there. And, and it was just, uh, Sam was saying to me on the phone, you know, wonderful memories. And that's the Bush Music Club to us, just that extended family, the wonderful people we met. Uh, Chris came along with Virginia uh, uh, later, and then um, the people like John Meredith, who are legendary, I suppose, in their collection. But it was one of the things we, uh, well, John and I, even before we were married, used to have Mero come to, um, no, we must have been married, Keith, because we didn't live together, did we, till we got married. <laughs> uh, we didn't do those days. The same house. Oh, <laughs> it must have been, it was in that little flat in Toxted Road, and uh, with Mero, I got banned from making him birthday cakes when I was just rum thing. Some of you might remember you put the chocolate biscuit in the rum and you slap it all together with cream and then you put it in the fridge and slice it. Oh, yeah. uh, being a Methodist, I didn't know the difference between OP rum or any of the hospital brandies and I was just basin and we ran out. I said, John, run down the street, get another bottle of rum. So we got it together. Mero reckoned he lived at that time at the rocks. He said, I got home somehow, but I know my feet didn't have to touch the footpath. <laughs> so those cakes were bad. But right up to the end of uh, Mero's life, really, I remember uh, Chris and Virginia would pick Mero up and bring him up to our place in Glebe, and we'd have uh, actually some wonderful stories <laughs> shared and songs and, uh, yeah, terrific memories. Um, and I could go on on all of those, but you know, enough of the memories and so on. We want to hear all the wonderful performers. But I, it is important to say that the Bush Music Club, throughout John and my life, played that huge part. And for John particularly, to meet people who were like Mero, Alan and Gay Scott, the Lockton, and of course Jim Trudy, who encouraged, who were interested, uh, and turned up each week with a new song. In fact, if you didn't have a new song about something, there was a, well, you know, what are you, what were you doing this way? Probably teaching, but you know, what were you really doing that mattered? So, uh, just, you know, an audience to listen to the songs, um, that was before important. And people like Duke Tritton to say, 
you know, if you can't project your voice to the end of the hall, a big hall, you can't understand every word, well, don't bother getting up, you know. We don't want any mumbles right. Um, and John certainly could project his voice. I uh, wouldn't try to compete with, wouldn't have tried to compete with John on that thing. Um, so, again, you know, just the Bush Music Club was just so, so important to us all. Um, and there was a, well, probably only, not only one time, but there was certainly a time, uh, and Chris remembers this, I think um, others might at the time, uh, where some people did comment about John's song and whether he should have sung a song quite so close to the events. But um, we had a Prime Minister who used to like to get around in his swimming costume, uh, particularly in front of a bevy of women and impress the women. It sort of seems to happen every now and again. And uh, so it was um, way back in 1967, I was actually had one baby, Sean, who he, the Sean and family said their apologies with the twins. They are so, so many activities, music and sport and social parties. Uh, they can't be with us today. They were over the Lady Donkey a month or so ago. Uh, and I must have been expecting Lachlan. And anyway, one of the things we would do with our babies is walk up and down our long hall, singing songs. Um, and uh, the tunes that might just depend the most recent song. Anyway, one of the ones we've been singing was, and I'm going to sing you the song, and you're going to have to help me with the chorus. <laughs> and it, some of you know it already, anyway. It's your Ho Little Fishies. Actually, you used to play the accordion yes. for that. Yes. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. Or? Yeah. I, I, I collected it. You collected it? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jamie, tell us about <laughs> maybe. So can you, you could obviously play it. Might be the thing to sing it in, but we'll all learn to sing it in. Tony's collected it. And that's what's so important, you know, about the Bush music. Don't call my concert center a boy. I was waiting for that. <laughs> oh, you never listen to yourself, do you want to sit down? Jamie on the concertina. Now, if we have... Oh, Nick, so which one it was the English? Oh, no. Thing? We don't have enough time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear? There's a lot of people who only, who, who only know the record notes. Right. So do you want to sit yeah. down and play? We we, I lived in South Granville, and I had a mate up, the, up, a, up a few several streets away named Bill Berry. Bill Berry discovered this gentleman in Granville called Dick Fitzgerald. Dick was a, a bit of a bit of an ex-shearer, or so he felt, he said. And he used to drink a lot, and he was a sort of man who was of a character who could be standing on a, on a bus stop with six other people, and the police would come along and they would pick him. <laughs> <laughs> Dick gave us this song about Little Fishy, and I sang it to Mero, and Mero said, oh, that's good, I'll record that. So I got the credit for collecting it. So if you get a thick enough book, Find the finest print you'll see my name on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song in my heart for one I love best, and the picture is tattooed all over my head. Yea, oh, little fishies, don't cry, don't cry. Yeah, oh, little fishies, don't cry. The ship's on the way and the weather is fine. The captain's on the bridge hanging out a line. Yeah, oh, little fishies, don't cry, don't cry. Oh, little fishies, don't cry, don't cry. Little fish, when he's caught, he fights like a bull whale. As he thrashes the water with his long narrow tail. Yeah, oh, little fishies, don't cry, don't cry. Yeah, oh, little fishies, don't cry, don't cry. The crew are asleep and the ocean's at rest. And I sing the song to the one I love best. Yeah, oh, little fishies, don't cry, don't cry. Yeah, oh, little fishies, don't cry, don't cry. Right. Don't go away, Jamie, because they've still got a
sing the same chorus. <laughs> Oh, Harold went swimming, alas and alack. Oh, Harold went swimming, and never coming back. Yeah. Oh, so if, you, if you do the chorus, because it sounds like I'm in a different key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 see these horrendous suicidal seas if you wanted to go into them, uh, which he apparently did. And uh, John sang it two days, two nights later. He'd written it from this for Sunday afternoon. And uh, on the Tuesday night he sung it. But I noticed in those days people used to be a little bit offended about uh, telling the truth about people who died. And I could look around, I could see these faces. And I went up to John later and I said, tell you what I have to witness. And he says, well, he said, I didn't like the bastard who was alive. Why should I like him now? <laughs> 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 